Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Though they are often thought of as underwater missiles, torpedoes actually have more in common with the ship firing them than the missiles used on land or in the air. They are self-propelled, moving through the water using various mechanisms, including compressed air, gas, propeller, and rudder systems. Torpedoes are not only used by submarines, but also by surface vessels. Though they date back to the 19th century, it wasn't until World War I and II that these devices saw widespread use and caused widespread destruction. Whether shot from submarines, launched from surface vessels, or dropped from planes, torpedoes are among the most effective naval weapons. Over the years, various navies around the world have designed a wide range of torpedo types and sizes. Many countries come together every two years to participate in the Rim of the Pacific exercise, or RIMPAC. This massive collaborative drill features numerous events, including Torpex operations, where ships practice with torpedoes and sometimes even sink decommissioned vessels. For instance, crews aboard the Royal Canadian Navy frigate Winnipeg are practicing loading one of their Mark 48 torpedoes. These 20-foot-long devices weigh nearly two tons and boast a firing range of up to 30 miles. Due to their haft and explosive capabilities, it takes several crew members to properly load a single Mark 48 into the waiting torpedo tube. There are many different classes of torpedoes and a variety of delivery devices. Though they are typically associated with submarines, most torpedoes are actually fired from surface vessels like the USS Chancellorville. These are constructed with rotatable torpedo batteries, both on deck and underneath. During operation, the batteries move into position, while a special door in the side of the ship's hull opens to reveal the torpedo's target. After firing the torpedo, the battery moves back into position as the hull door closes simultaneously. The entire process takes just a few seconds and doesn't involve any human intervention until it's time to reload the torpedo tubes. This sort of automation is essential in modern naval warfare. It ensures the captain and their crew can engage an enemy while paying close attention to their own ship's defense and countermeasures. Like many missiles and bombs used by the world's biggest navies, torpedoes must often be assembled before they are put into service. These technicians from Coastal System Station at the Naval Surface Warfare Center in California are assembling a U.S. Navy Mark 48 heavyweight torpedo. This is the same model previously loaded into Winnipeg's torpedo tubes. These massive weapons were first introduced in 1972. However, 
They have proved themselves so successful that they have been modified several times over the decades to ensure they could remain in service. In modern currency, a single Mark 48 can cost as much as $5 million. That's why it's crucial that the teams handling the assembly be extremely careful. Indeed, despite the fact that they are weapons of destruction, torpedoes contain many sensitive internal components. Should one of these fail or be installed improperly, it could lead to catastrophic problems down the line. Each Mark 48 boasts a swashplate piston engine. This allows it to travel at speeds of more than 60 miles per hour and operate at an estimated depth of up to 2,600 feet. Close my surface. Older versions of the torpedo contained a remote control system whereby the submarine firing the weapon could control its direction. You guys saw that. However, later versions included a common broadband advanced sonar system. This allows for better independent control and helps the torpedo evade many enemy countermeasures. The warhead itself is a high explosive unit weighing 650 pounds. It's designed to detonate underneath the ship, not against it. This attack approach breaks the keel of the ship, rendering it inoperable. However, should the weapon miss its target, it is actually capable of circling around for another pass. After assembly is complete, the team still needs to get the 3,500-pound weapon aboard its ship, the USS Pasadena. This process involves using a powerful crane to lift the torpedo off the flatbed truck and onto the submarine. This is done with a steel frame that attaches to the torpedo's outer casing. Once secured, the weapon is lifted into a cradle, which lifts it vertically so that it can be inserted into the submarine's torpedo room. Submarines are not designed with a wide variety of weapons. Since guns can't be fired underwater, they generally rely on their torpedo tubes and vertically fired missiles to engage enemy ships or targets on land. The USS Oklahoma City is a Los Angeles class fast attack submarine. and it boasts an impressive armament of Mark 48 torpedoes, Tomahawk cruise missiles, harpoon missiles, and mines. The Oklahoma City is more than 360 feet long and weighs more than 6,000 tons fully loaded. Its crew consists of 17 officers and around 134 enlisted. The ship is currently assigned to Submarine Squadron 15 out of Polaris Point, Guam. Situated in the middle of the Pacific, just north of Papua New Guinea, this base tends to keep a watch on the East China Sea, South China Sea, and the Philippine Sea. Day-to-day -day operations largely consist of different types of patrols, with the sub traveling both under and above the water. Crew members will frequently participate in various types of drills. They do this in order to keep themselves ready for anything that they might encounter.
Of course, merely keeping a Los Angeles-class submarine like the USS Oklahoma City on task requires a lot of teamwork. The systems on board require constant monitoring, and most of the sonar and guidance equipment is highly complex. From the crew members in charge of weapons to those that do the cooking in the galley, every job is equally important. Of all the exercises in which naval forces can participate, one of the most exciting is SYNC-X. This is when teams from multiple vessels coordinate an attack on a decommissioned vessel. The goal is to sink that vessel while providing pilots, gunners, and weapons specialists a chance to experience something very close to real combat. In 2021, the USS Carl Vinson, a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, and the USS Chicago, a fast attack submarine, worked together to sink the decommissioned guided missile frigate Ingraham. The attack involved F-A-18 Super Hornets, F-35C Joint Strike Fighters, and a variety of weapons and munitions. The Ingraham made for a very large target. At 453 feet long, it weighed more than 4,000 tons and boasted relatively thick armor across its hull. During the attack, multiple salvos hit the vessel from the air, sea, and land. The final blow came when the U.S. Marine Corps fired two naval strike missiles from shore, which managed to navigate around the pre-programmed simulated mountains to shatter the Ingraham's hull. Another major collaborative operation took place in early 2022. This time, ships and subs from the U.S. Navy were deployed to the Beaufort Sea in the Arctic. Known as ISEX, this three-week exercise allows various ships and crews to assess their operational readiness for cold water operations. During such operations, the U.S. military will generally use dummy torpedoes with no warhead attached. Nonetheless, they are still expensive and sophisticated pieces of equipment and they must be recovered so that they can be used again. The Arctic recovery process presents further training opportunities for the divers who need to locate and secure the torpedo. As well as the ships and helicopters that help pull the weapons out from the sheets of Arctic ice. More than 100 years after aircraft were first armed with torpedoes, helicopters and planes are still armed with these powerful weapons. Because they can sometimes surprise unsuspecting naval ships by attacking from the air, such torpedo attacks can be extremely effective. In fact, torpedo attacks from Japanese aircraft were responsible for sinking or damaging 19 U.S. Navy ships during the surprise attack at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. To this day, it's one of the best examples of just how powerful torpedoes really are. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.